Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Act With Purpose podcast. I have two very special guests with me. They are both friends and colleagues. Please welcome Cheryl Poirier and Jen Foster. Yay. Hi. Hey. Hi, guys. Hi. I'm oh, gosh. So, so good to see you. It's so great to see you, too. And thank you guys for joining. And I have to tell you, I think you're amazing. All right. I'm just going to start <laughs> off with that. Thanks. So I want to catch everyone up. Um, Cheryl is an actress and a comedian. Uh, she is very well. well I'm a comedian now. <laughs> Thanks to Jen. <laughs> Self appointed uh, comedian, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I, of course, am your host, John Stevens. But I want to introduce you to our very special guest. Um, Cheryl is a comedian, an actress, an improviser, uh, and she is very well known in the industry. And so it's really exciting to have you here. And I have the opportunity to see you perform with your cohort here, Miss uh, Jen Foster, Hi. Uh, in a really <laughs> neat and very unusual, but but it just seems to go so well together. I feel like this is the old commercial for Reese's <laughs> peanut butter cups. It's like you put a peanut on my chocolate. You put peanut on my chocolate on my peanut butter, and they take a bite, and it's like so amazing. But um, yeah. So Jen, I, I want to chat with you a little bit because, like, you are uh, a medium. You are uh, extremely connected and you're very gifted in this realm. I am, I will, I will play devil's advocate. I will be the skeptic in the audience for a moment and just tell you when I first went to go um, and, and get involved with any of this sort of thing, I think that there's always that voice in the back of our head, right? Is like, is this real? Is that sort of thing? Well, I've got to tell you, after seeing your guys' show, which, by the way, is just, there's no other word than brilliant. Uh, it's really, really amazing to see you both in your element, sometimes separately, sometimes together. But, Jen, I'm just curious. I mean, there's got to be naysayers in the, in the audience and that sort of thing. And you must deal with that on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. What do you say or how do you manage um, having to justify your abilities? I think because I've been doing this for so long now, it's been almost 10 years and I didn't know I was like this. I know people are shocked about that, but I didn't know. Someone told me and it kind of happened really fast that uh, I just started seeing things and knowing things. And it's over. It's just experience. You, you kind of learn that the way I look at it is that I'm a channel. And it's not about being right or wrong. It's getting the messages out. And that's what I focus on. Every time I do one session or a big group, it's always about me getting whatever messages are out. And you have, like, I had a time one time where a lady, I remember this is years ago, I was just starting out and she kept saying no. And I was, I kept going. And then like the next day we, we were at a retreat. She told me, she's like, I lied the whole time. <laughs> you were right the whole time. I'm like, why would you do that? But you just learn. It's not about me. It's yeah. Not, it's well, not about it's me. funny. It's funny, John. You talk about skeptics because I, I, Jen and I, before we did our first show, we we had all, like we met during COVID, so we had never seen each other in person. We would never met in person, and then Jen reached out to me and she said, "Hey, let's do an improv and messages from Spirit show and talk about skepticism." I was like, "What?" Like because. Like improv is like people either love it or they hate it. And then messages from spirit, people either love it or they hate it. So Jen's like, let's take the two things that are most polarizing in entertainment and put them together. And so I was like, I, I don't see how this is going to work. And Jen was like, that's okay. I've already seen it. It's going to be great. <laughs> so I was like, oh, yeah, of course. And of course she's right. And I, I now know it's like when Jen says, oh, we're going to do this. I'm like, okay. So great. yeah, yeah. 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 I love she it. Said, well, she said a little while ago, she was like, I see us doing private events and bang. Now we're doing private events. We're, we're doing private events. Like, private events. Let's talk yeah. about that. I heard you just booked a wedding. Yeah. 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 That's so, I, mean, I love that. 
I'm not exactly sure <laughs> how smart of an idea it was to be like a middle-aged, <laughs> never-been-married comedian for your wedding, but we're going to give it a shot. <laughs> I mean, but the great thing is that now that Jen and I have met, we're, I mean, it didn't take long for us to form a really strong bond, and it's like, you know, like soul sister community, right? And so, I mean, there are times when, like, nobody else has to be there. Jen and I can just go <laughs> back and forth. So that might be what the wedding is. I don't know. But it's going to be, yeah, we're really excited about it. And it's just great to, I mean, Jen does what she does. But it's really great practice for me to kind of, like, expand what I talk about. And also, because... My comedy is mined from my childhood experiences. And so weddings, like, I've been in seven weddings. <laughs> so I have a lot of experience with weddings. I'm the quintessential, always the bridesmaid, never the bride. <laughs> so there's, and so I'm, I'm like starting right, I'm writing stuff down right now. And I'm talking to my sister because her and I were in two weddings together. And I'm talking to my mom, like, do you remember this? Do you remember this? And they're like, we don't remember any of that show. So it's good that I have the memory for it. So it's like that new stories. Movie. Yeah. With the dresses. 27 dresses. <laughs> 27 I know. Dresses. Great film. I feel, yeah. I'm going to bring that up. Maybe I should wear a bridesmaid dress. We totally should. Oh my should. gosh. <laughs> we should totally do it. It's be good to be an act. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I love it. So, I mean, we let's talk about this show. Let's talk about what mm. it is. I yeah. compared it to um, uh, Colin Mockery's doing a really amazing thing with hypnosis and improv. And I yeah. thought that was a really interesting, and that was a far out, far out idea, and it's taken off. Everyone's mm -hmm. talking about that show, and it's one of the most Instagrammable uh, things that I've seen out there. And I feel like this is really, you guys have tapped into something just as, beautifully odd. <laughs> As I that. like that. Yeah. Dude, I'm, I'm like beautifully odd. I'm right now. <laughs> yeah. It's so not planned. That's the funny thing. This isn't like mm -hmm. I sat down and this is how I let live my life just by intuition. It just comes. And it honestly just, I had a vision. I reached out. I don't know if she's going to say yes. <laughs> I asked her, she took three days to get back to me. <laughs> and but then, that's honestly how it is and that's how we are too it's not planned things we just we are who we are on stage like, so if that's yeah. a great question so that's one of the things i wanted to ask you is how do you rehearse mm -hmm. or prepare for mm -hmm. a show of this nature that incorporates uh live comedy and of course your uh being in tune uh, like how do you how do you get prepared for a show? I so it's <laughs> Cheryl. I do not. Prepares, I meditate. I just show up. Yeah, Jen. I feel like I I joke that Jen has the easy part. She just shows up because she she is who she is at the show, and who she is at the show is who she is. Whether you're out to dinner with her or whether you're just sitting around having dinner or you're just you know, shooting the crap around a campfire. Jen is who she is. I, uh, and I don't think I am that different either. I just mm -hmm. have certain beats, like certain stories. I, I tell, I've told some of the same stories, but I've also switched up some stories. I, I, when people ask, like, so we present ourselves as a medium and a comedian. So they're stand up and, uh, messages from spirit. And, when people ask me, well, what kind of stand up do you do? I, I'm more of a storyteller. So I sometimes, um, I sometimes use like, I said, I'm kind of like Stuart McLean a little bit, right? Cause I'm telling stories. Uh, it's my, it, they just happen to be stories of my childhood, which are just, I was a weird little kid and I'm a weird big adult so i mean i was gonna say know. i find it interesting you use the term was <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and i'm still weird i think, and, you're, and, fun. I think yeah. you're fun yes yeah fun festive Not, well you're yeah. dense fun too like people don't understand like i i sometimes they think that they're gonna come and i'm gonna talk and they're and they're gonna laugh at what i say and then jen's gonna be like <gasps> 
and it's going to be all serious. And everything. But that's not the case. Jen is super funny. Yes. And you know what? That was a very pleasant surprise from when uh, I, I took my friend Anthony Audain to, to go see you guys for the first show. Wow. That was absolutely amazing. Had no idea what to expect, but I feel like he was the perfect person to yeah. uh, bring into that uh, space. But uh, both of us kind of had the same um, uh, assumption that it was going to be more serious with Jen. No. And when you came out and you took the you took the same energy and you just glided into whatever you were sharing with other people. And it was just really, uh, you guys are the perfect pair. And this isn't something that just any, you know, any stand up comedian and medium could just throw together. I feel like it does take a very special relationship. So how did you two meet? <laughs> you know what's so funny is I was going to call Jen and I was going to say, we have to get our story straight. <laughs> <laughs> But I think I uh, I have a mentor, and I asked her if she knew a medium, mm, yeah. uh, and she directed me to Jen. And so I got on, the, and so Jen does, you know, yeah, yeah, Jen talks to dead people, but she's also an intuitive healer. So when she got on the phone with me, she was like, she started talking about, me and my characteristics and what I was actually dealing with emotionally and mentally and without me even saying anything to her. And I'm like, <laughs> in my mind, I was like, she's not talking to any of the dead people that I want to talk to. What the hell is going on? Uh, but, but she's, so she's also an intuitive healer. And so we actually met on, well, I mean, I think I texted her or I emailed her or, or I think hit her up on Instagram. I think that was how um, it happened. Got in touch with her assistant we booked a session and then it was all on the phone. Like the first time I saw her was over the phone. If she was sitting in her car Probably. and she was like, she had notes and she was writing notes and she was like, tell me this, tell me this, tell me this. And this, blah, blah. And it was like, Ooh. and you know what? Can I, so can I tell you something, John? You came up in one of my readings before I met you. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Because oh I'm going God. back over my Tell notes. Me more. <laughs> yeah, so I, was like, I need because, to know. Listen, I, I've been doing improv. Like I started doing improv a long time ago, and I've been acting for a long time. But I stepped away from acting, and I worked in healthcare for 20 years. I was a massage therapist for 20 years, and then uh, like four years ago, just before the pandemic started, four, three, four years ago, I, I, I was like, I am done. I am done touching naked people for money. I'm done. Like, that's what I used to tell people I did. And, and I was like, I just, I couldn't handle it anymore. And so during COVID, I was in this weird flux period where I wasn't working as a massage therapist. I, I work in a restaurant that was shut down and I was at home, which I loved. Like I was really okay being at home um, during the pandemic, but I was like, okay, what's next? Cause I'm always about what's next. And so I reached out and Jen and I did a ses session and she's like, no, she goes, I see you. I see you training with someone. I see you meeting a male who is very outgoing and vivacious, but you're, but it's like, you're going to meet him through like, almost like other people. And that's what happened. I met you during, um, uh, movie expo. Movie expo. Yeah. And I, was. yeah. And I, I, uh, I got the upgraded package and got coaching and you were one of my coaches. <laughs> and the week before you, you and I had a coaching call, I registered unbeknownst to me, I registered for your class. And then the day before our coaching call, I was like, John, wait, John Stevens. Wait, I started a class with next week. And so it was like, we got on, it was like, oh, I know, like, I'm going to know you. So, so you came up in one of my readings before I even met you. That's, Jen. Oh, that's, but like, I don't that's, remember these things. When I channel it, yeah. a lot of times I don't remember what I'm saying. That's what yeah, people yeah. don't realize. It's interesting when people, like Cheryl knows me on a personal level, but when people see me as Jen and they they think I know everything and I'm like, I don't have everything. I know I'm just channeling in that moment. And then I don't know. <laughs> I'm always like, I don't know what's going to happen or not. I'm very intuitive. That's what people don't get intuitive. Like, 
people call it psychic. I had a problem with that word for a long time. I really had to work on it because I never saw myself like that. Mm -hmm. But I can, I'm shown in the moment a lot of times either what's going to happen or maybe something that's happened in the past to help. Uh, that's what I mean by intuitive. So anyways, with her saying that, I don't remember <laughs> a lot of times I don't I know. what I say. I know. So that brings me to something else because it's really, you used the term earlier, Cheryl, that she's an intuitive healer and you're using the word intuitive. And I think our listeners would be really interested in it. Like what is, what does that mean? An intuitive healer? So, so first of all, I'm going to, so first of all, I'm going to let Jen explain and then I'm going to put it in context for actors. Great. Okay. It's basically, so I started, when I first started channeling, I was kind of told I was a medium. I, I always saw spirit. Uh, it's basically intuitive kind of just means I could see. It's kind of like psychic. I don't know how to explain it. I could see in the moment things that are happening. Spirit is showing me. So the loved ones are still talking to me. Just I, I do it so fast that I see in the moment I say I say it fast. So intuitive just means I guess you can see I I I have all the clairs if you've heard of them. So there's clairvoyant, there's claircognance, clair sentience, clair auditory, and clair what's the other one? I forget. Cognizance. Yes. And my strongest is clear cognizance, which is the clear knowing. That's my strongest gift is a clear knowing in that moment. So I know in the moment, but I'm basically being told. I'm being told. So I, I've, no, I've done it so long now that I just say it. I just know. So that's the only, an intuitive healer means I could see, I could see things in, like I'll be shown what it is. So it could be something in someone's past that's happened. I'm shown. And I, I know how to work through it energetically because I'm a Reiki master mm. and energy. I shift energy basically in people's lives. I've had people tell me that I could be like six sessions of therapy in one. Amazing. Amazing. But get ready to go to the bathroom a lot. Because <laughs> you're clearing. Because you're clearing. Because you're clearing and then you're clearing. Not at the show, guys. Not at the show. <laughs> Not at the show. <laughs> No I need to wear diapers to the show. I'm not doing that at the show. Don't worry. I'm. Don't worry. The show is about being a medium and channeling. But I think we done. just found your first sponsor, Metamucil. This is great. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about branding. Well, um, you know, really? I don't know if I want to be known for that, but <laughs> yeah, this That's show so is funny. shit. <laughs> this show is shit. That's perfect. That's perfect. It is. Um, yeah. So, Cheryl, so, you, you said you wanted to talk to address, like, what that like, means for an actor. To put it in context for an actor. So, how it works with Jen is, and this is, and Jen, I'm, so, uh, I am, so here's the other thing. I do Reiki as well, and I do energy healing, but I don't tell a lot of people about it. My So, my primary is something different. But the more I work with Jen, the more intuitive I get and the more oh it's like oh yeah yep so I'm work I'm working on it so uh so Jen so this is what I've been told to tell you uh as far as like comparing it to acting is when you're in a scene with someone and so you know your lines and you're good with the dialogue and then say you're having a, a like a really soft conversation with someone that you love and you're you're having a dialogue with them and a scene with them. And then for some reason, you just reach out to like touch their face or push their hair back. So it's like an intuitive moment in the scene. You you don't plan it. You don't feel it. You don't know it's coming. It just happens. And then the scene is over and you're like, oh, man, that. Yeah. And then it, and then trying to recreate that after feels kind of like cardboard, like like, I, okay, now's when I go in to touch the face or now's when I go, you know, but it's that initial urge to do something in a scene that just kind of brings it and like makes it magic. It's like those little things that you do in a scene. That's intuitive. That's how, that's the way intuition works. I think with Jen, it's like things just come through her and they come out. It's not planned. It's not, she doesn't know anything. It's just, it just comes from a place and it's out and then it's done. Beautiful. It's a, actually yeah. a, a brilliant uh, <laughs> deconstruction of, of kind of, of bringing it to terms under an acting guise. Very nice. 
Yeah. Um, so I guess the the question I have for you is what sorts of things do people come to you for, Jen? This seems like a very, I mean, I think people are, and I think COVID also helped people kind of open their minds a little bit to some certain extent, and people were looking for answers and, and uh, what are, what are some of the things that people come to you saying, I need help with this? Everything. Uh, yeah. yeah. A lot of, it's typical stuff like say money, struggling. A lot of times we're stuck in a lack mentality that, you know, people who, uh, I guess they would say they're doing mindfulness. They're they're trying. They're saying they're trying everything. I'm trying meditating. I'm trying to work with the universe, the law of attraction, all this stuff, and they're still stuck. And a lot of times, it's something behind the scenes that could be so small that I could see and I could shift it. So money, or they want to see, know about their future and money. Uh, obviously, relationships. That's the one of the biggest ones, right? Relationships. Uh, talking to loved ones is huge. Obviously, just to say hi to see what they want to say because they miss them and I understand because I've studied grief in person with people and I've studied it studied it with like textbooks and books and courses so I have both sides um that's like typical stuff normal day stuff that people we all struggle with I guess they come to me for yeah for help it's Do you I have any one story that kind of stands out in your head is just like that was an interesting or bizarre or monumental or kind of uh, case. I mean, they all have, I would imagine they all have an impact, of course. But is there anything that just kind of like, that's the story that kind of comes to your head? Remember, I don't, a lot of, I don't remember a lot of what I'm saying. A sharing. lot of things. Um, I can actually, so, <laughs> because since we started doing shows, in the Toronto area. So Jen doesn't live in the GTA proper. Uh, my people are in Toronto. So a lot of the people who have come to the shows have been people that I've known. And I, so it's so funny because a number of times people at the show have come to me and said, did you tell Jen anything about me before? And I'm like, no. And it's funny because the last show that we did, um, uh, we are this during this particular during the summer we've been doing outdoor shows at Comedy Alley, which is down at Broadview and Queen, which is just like an outdoor rooftop space, and it's literally an alley. You could put your arms out and touch one side of the wall with either hand, and so it's, it's just been a really great intimate space, which is wonderful. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Uh, but um, a couple of people showed up at the last show. And Jen um, spoke to them and they, she spoke to them about their wedding and some other um, details. And after the show, one of them came up to me and said, I don't believe in what Jen does. And I was sitting there and I was thinking, nope, Cheryl told her this, Cheryl told her this, Cheryl told her this. And then when she started talking about X, the tears, you know, he said, my, my eyes filled with tears. And then I was sitting there thinking, I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. And, and they were like, I, I don't, she couldn't have known that because nobody knew that. And I'm like, that's Jen. That's Jen. That's the way Jen. And she, and the great thing about the show is that, I mean, we're normal, we're just normal everyday people. Like if we were walking down the street, you wouldn't think, ah, medium, ah, come I mean, I walk down the street and people think I'm hilarious because usually because I trip or do something st or I'm talking to myself. So they're like, who's mm -hmm. that funny lady? It's like, yeah, yeah. I've seen your walk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm from the Monty Python school of silly walk. Yeah. Um, but that like Jen, Jen is a normal person. I'm a normal person. We just happen to come together to do the show that surprises and really delights people, but also surprises and really delights us because like the very first show that I did, I had some notes, but I didn't know what there was. There was stuff that I talked about that I had no idea was going to come out of my mouth, and I blame that on Jen a little <laughs> and uh, on her intuition. It's like she has this intuitive bubble, and when we met, she hugged me and she put me in her intuitive bubble, and it's like I don't remember any of that show <laughs> at all. I only I I. Uh, the only reason why I know what I said is because my friend was sitting in the front row and she filmed everything. And I was like, Oh my God, I said that. Oh my God, I said that. Oh my God, I said that. 
<laughs> and then I talked to my mom. My mom was like, oh, my God, you said that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, we're well, just normal people who happen to come together to put together the show that leaves. My goal in life is to leave people better than they found them. And I feel like this show definitely does that. Absolutely. It's what it's all Fun. about. Joy. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. And that's exactly what we got. We left there feeling like, again, had no expectations, had no idea what we were walking into. But I do know that when we left, we were skipping. We were like having such a good time. We were talking about the show. We couldn't stop talking about it. We still talk about it. He still messages me. And goes, you know what the next one is going to be? And you know, you know, like he, he, like you really made a big impression. Oh, we message you. We message him all the time. Good, <laughs> he, good. he gave us the best review. It's plastered over everything. <laughs> <laughs> he is uh, just a genuinely um, yes. generous and kind soul. Mm -hmm. uh, well, sure. I mean, and thank you for your support. Yes, because I think, I think I when I told you that I was really nervous about doing it because I'd never done stand up before. And I was really nervous. And Jen called me a couple of days before the show. And she's like, look, I know you're nervous, but you're going to be fine. I've seen it. You're great. <laughs> and I was like, I, I can't. I don't know. Like, I, you know. Are you arguing? I was, <laughs> you can't argue. Like, there's no arguing with Jen. Jen's like, I've seen it. You know. No, but I, I, feel it. I feel it. Yeah. It's really connected to me. I could sense how they're feeling. And because we're yeah. so connected. Like she said, we're, we feel like soul sisters. It's like. It's just an instant connection that's not fake. What you saw is real. And that's how we yeah. get along. Yeah. And behind the scenes, like even supporting each other as people and friends, it's just there. We have each other's back yeah. no matter what. And, and I, I sense that just from, from the, the short time that I got to see you both together, but also just seeing how you guys interact, not just like live and in person, but how you interact in your emails, how you interact in your phone calls, how you're interacting here. You can absolutely tell that there is a very special bond and a very special friendship that um, is uh, inarguable. Uh, so do you think that because you both have that Reiki experience, you have that energy sense about you, has that been something that you guys have bonded over? Does it make your friendship deeper? Yeah, I think so, yeah. It does. One, but one other thing that really makes our friendship really great is I, because I don't, like, I don't like to see dead people. I'm like, they freak me out. Like, just, like if I were to see an apparition of a dead person, I would, I would crap. Like, I, like, it would freak me out. And the dead people in my life know this. Because I, I once said, I'm like, if y'all ever show yourselves to me in any way, that's it. I, I'm kicking you out. You're never coming back. And so I am, in, and so I am very in my humanness. Like I am very in my physical human body bag with <laughs> an occasional connection, right? Jen is, Jen is like the opposite. Jen is super connected. So it's kind of like when we get together, it's like the perfect marriage of connection and grounding. Okay. I think anyway, I don't know if Jen could speak to that a little bit. I agree absolutely with that. And <laughs> we're not going to get into more stories about what she's talking about. Cause we've had some situations where loved ones come to me, uh, but. Cause I won't listen to them. <laughs> <laughs> so whenever we're together and they want to talk to me, they go straight to Jen. It's like they line up behind me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I know. I want people to understand. I think maybe the way we've been raised, right, is and the TV's awesome. Don't get me wrong. I love movies, show movies and TV and all. I love it. But we've been taught that it's scary and it's wrong, right? And it's not. There's so many indigenous cultures that connect to their loved ones. They have, call it differently, different words. We're all connected. We've just been taught it's scary, and it's really not. They're actually yeah. to help us. They're here to help. Yeah. yeah. I think I had to get, I was never afraid of them because I always saw them. I, it would get annoying sometimes. Like when, before I knew I was like this, I'd still see them. I guess because they don't, people think they, they show up whenever. I'm not trying to scare people, but they're there. You don't have a choice when they come. And what I've really learned is to not, I'm not afraid of spirit. I know they're there to help me. 
they've never harmed me. They're all, they're, they're very loving. They're very kind. They're funny. They're the personalities of when, before they, when they were alive on the earth. Um, and I remember my mom, my grandma always saying to me when I first started remembering that I was seeing spirit as a teenager, she used to always say, don't be afraid of the dead, be afraid of the living. And that's what she used to always say to me. <laughs> right? It's not, I'm not saying that's true, but that's when I always kept that with no, me, like but... they harm us. And it's just it's this, it's this, I think it's just turned into this fear, right? Because it's exciting. It's Halloween. There's ghosts. And really, they're actually very loving and kind. And they just, they want the best for us. So anyways, that's what I tried to tell Cheryl when her family's talking to me. <laughs> and I'm trying to just, because I try, I try very hard just to live. I try to, I have two little girls. I, I'm very focused on just living my life. And then when I'm channeling, I channel. I've worked very hard at it because it's very overwhelming sometimes. Like well, that's what I was going to ask. It must take a certain toll on you, though. Mm -hmm. nothing, nothing in life is free. Um, and I feel like because um, I, I, I'm not a Reiki master by any stretch of the imagination, but I do understand the concepts behind it. And I'm a big believer in the mind body connection. And I think it's very interesting that that it, it has to take a certain toll. And how do you sustain yourself? And this is a question really for both of you, because you both do energy work. But how do you um, sustain yourself with the amount of energy that it is got to be draining? Right? So how do you replenish, I guess? Well, for, it took a lot of, it takes practice. So I've been doing this, like I said, for 10 years, probably since I found someone told me who I was, remember when I first started doing it, I couldn't even walk. I was so, I, cause I was teaching myself. I didn't train to do this. This just happened. But I didn't go to like medium school or something. <laughs> me. I had no idea. It just started happening. So it just, it just, it takes practice. Every time you do it, you learn, you learn, you have to ground your energy uh, little things you have to clear your energy, like meditate. It just takes time to practice it, and you take on a lot of energy. Uh, and that's why I was saying a lot of times, I I just want to live, so I shut it down. So I'm not always out. I don't want to be out all the time channeling. I want to live my life because it is tiring. And when people say a lot of time, I understand why people are afraid, especially that I can see things. I always say, do you know how tiring it is? <laughs> like, uh, and whatever is going on in your life, I meant to. I'm here to help people. I'm not here to judge you and I'm not going to be channeling all the time anyways, because it's tiring. It's, you need rest. Mm -hmm. You need to take care of yourself. I need to be, for me, I need to be outside. If I don't go outside, I don't feel well. Um, just stuff like that. Meditation, clearing, you're learning. Is this mine? Like when you're feeling energy, is this mine or am I feeling spirit? Like it's, that's how I do it with practice and, and energy sessions. I get, I have people help me to like, go back, like kind of clear my energy and, um, kind of rejuvenate me sometimes. So I take care of my, it's very important for me to take care of my energy because I want to be a clear channel for people who are coming to me. So that's one of my practices is my energy and taking care of it and ensuring I'm a clear channel and I rest. <laughs> Good. Yeah. And Cheryl may be different. That's just because I do it a lot, right? I, I've been doing groups for a long time, so I'm used to it. What about you, Cheryl? Uh yeah, I, I, I have, uh, I started like a morning practice. I, I get outside every morning for 20 to 30 minutes and then I come back and I do yoga. So I have now built that into my day. I, um, I don't have any children. Uh, so it's easier for me to like come home and be alone. Uh, and that's what I do. I make sure I get rest, like, like sleep for me. All, I mean, all through my entire life has been a big thing. So I'm very conscious about getting enough sleep. Um, I don't have my cell phone. Like I'm one of those people who I shut my cell phone off at night and I leave it in the living room. Like it's not in my bedroom. So I'm very, it's because, uh, because I, it, I like, I can, I liken working with people and energy work to social media Sometimes you can find yourself just scrolling mindlessly on social media and the, and you can, it's almost like you can feel your energy just going straight into your phone and like literally draining you. Mm -hmm. So it's like shutting it off and shutting off people. And, and I've learned 
boundaries. Mm-hmm. Like, and, and that's, that was really hard for me because I was raised Catholic. So it's like, yes to everybody, go! And Irish, and I mean, forget it. There's nothing that you can do that's not going to incur some kind of Irish guilt. So, uh, <laughs> I, you know, I've really learned to, you know, when the phone, like when my phone rings, I don't just jump on it and answer it. I actually look and who is it? And I need to, and sometimes I need to consider like, is this a good call for me to take right now? And sometimes it's not. And so then I'll let it go to voicemail and then I'll just text the person. I'll be like, I can't write like the other one. I for. <laughs> I stitched my first TikTok the other day, but it took me all morning. And then I was like, I'm done for the day. I don't want to talk to anybody. Oh, I'm done, 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 done. Right. So I'm, I am now I'm more aware, especially because I work with Jen and Jen has helped me as well. I'm more aware of my body cues that are telling me like, cause I have a cue where my body's like, it's time to shut some stuff down or you're going to be in trouble. And then it, it's the, you know, it'll ding a couple times. And then, and then if I don't shut down, my body goes, you didn't shut down. And then it's like, I must sleep now. And sometimes that can happen like at 430 in the afternoon. I'll be like, <laughs> so. That was I you on the DVP, wasn't it? All I want is a, asleep. <laughs> All I want is a freaking Tesla so I can just sleep Sleep driving around (laughs) down there. That's all. Oh, my God. A lot of alone time. You need space. At least that's for me. I need space. Because I'm dealing with a lot of people with stuff going on, too, with their private lives that I see. I don't hear it. I don't just hear people talking. I see what's happening. I need a lot of time where I just need to just, like, just sit there sometimes and veg out and, like, watch Netflix for hours. That's what I do. Nice. I'll watch Ted Lasso over and over and over. (laughs) Or the Big Big Bang Theory over and over and over and over and over and over and over again because it's mindless. Or Joey and Melissa, another one of my favorites. Uh, Mindless half hour sitcom. But so there's one also one thing that I wanted to put about the show because we're talking a lot about Jen seeing stuff. So, and I don't want people to be afraid. No. Um, It's like Jen. Jen is really sensitive. Like she's sensitive, but she's sensitive to you as well. And if something comes up that's not for public consumption, she won't say it. But also, if you don't want her to know it, she can't see it like a lot of times, right? So if there's a resistance, she's very, very compassionate and very, very empathetic that way. Yeah, yeah. So I don't want people to freak out and be like, oh, my God, she's going to see my deep, deepest, darkest soul. It's no. Like... Remember right. I said our show is comedy and sphere. It's more about mediumship. Yes. I'm talking yes. about what I do on my daily life as a pra- like my practice mm-hmm. with people yeah. and how I help. But our show is not. It's fun. Your loved ones come through. They're funny. Um, how I, would their you personalities prepare? Come through. How would you prepare somebody <laughs> to see your show? Just be open. Yeah. Be yeah. open. I can understand. Remember, like, remember, I didn't know it was like this. So I understand how everybody feels. I didn't, it's not that I didn't, never believed in it. I just was, I didn't have any point of view, really, actually. Well, it's, I understand what it's like to be on the other side of not right. of me. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I truly, under, like, there is a reason um, why you two are such a brilliant mix and match because you know, I think there are a lot of uh, stigmas and fear around mm-hmm. um, around what we're talking about. And I think that that's yeah. what's so beautiful is that with, well, you both have a sense of humor, but Cheryl uh, comes in and, you know, I compare her to the cookie you get after you give blood. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So, you know, it can be like, like I found myself li- really wrapped up in what, like even if it wasn't about me, I was exhausted after hearing like you 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 pinned so many different things that were happening with uh, one of the women that was uh, at the show that, that I saw, and I just remember thinking like I need some time to process this <laughs> right, and then Cheryl stepped in 
-hmm. kind of brought some of the things back into it, shared a story. And it was kind of like, okay. And then now I'm ready for the next reading. And I feel like it, it really took us on this, again, just oddly beautiful, but so incredible uh, journey. And it is a lot of highs and lows, but not the kinds of highs and lows you might um, necessarily experience it like a theater or a film or any of that sort of thing. But it, it's a, it's a very interesting ride. Um, and I just, I think that that's the thing that I walked away from is I, I was like, I have, I had no idea what to expect, but it was so much better than I could have ever imagined. It was, Thanks. it really was spectacular. I think that you two have um, the corner on something that is, is potentially really um this is this is a, a catalyst for uh, better understanding and making it mm-hmm. um, approachable and yes. not scary. Yeah, yeah. And I think a lot of education and I think a lot of of good, other than the individual good that you guys are doing, I think there's a lot of good that is going to happen um, for everyone that sees your show because it really is. It 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 opens your mind, it opens your heart, it opens so many different conversations. We couldn't mm-hmm. stop talking after we left the show. We were like, and what about that one thing that happened with this? <laughs> what about the cat? There was the cat. Do you remember the cat? And like we we, we just we we kept, we kept things and kind of like what you were saying, like. It's so much information. I can see, Jen, how you don't remember because literally there's so many pieces of information that that came through so quickly. Um, we we had trouble remembering everything. And I was like, wait, but she said that? Yeah, yeah. She, don't you remember? She said this. And then Cheryl said this joke about that. But I got to tell you, um, truly inspirational. Uh, we could not stop talking after we left this show. I want to encourage anyone and mm-hmm. everyone who is listening um, to check it out. When are some of your upcoming dates? Do you have uh, dates to announce yet? We're work right now. We're working on Canada dates, so we, mm-hmm. we don't have the exact dates right now because okay. we both we are working on it. I wish we had dates, but we don't. Um, <laughs> we are planning one in British Columbia. Yes, that was my next question. Are you? Yes. Yeah. We want to go west. Road. Yeah. We want to go on the road. It's going to be a little bit limited because I do have children, right? So I kind of have to work it around my schedule as being mom, because you know, uh, that's more. That's the most important thing is to be mom. But we are trying to focus on Canada right now because that's where a lot of our outlets are, and that's what we know. Yeah. We want to go. We want to go through Canada. And we're very open to go to the States too. We have, we both have a lot of connections through the United States as well. And we want to open it up to that too. So it's more Mm -hmm. of like, I see it happening. It's just trying to get the dates as everything falling into place. And the neat thing is I've learned just from my life because I live by intuition. This is just how I live my life. Yeah. Things just start happen. Like someone will just start talking to us. Like we have a Guelph. We're going to do one in Guelph, Ontario, Canada. Um, That's what we're Mm -hmm. planning right now. Um, Mm -hmm. it's going to be bigger probably than what we're doing because comedy alley is amazing. I like love that place, but it doesn't, it doesn't fit a lot of people. Uh, so we are going to keep posting and Cheryl and I have to sit down. It's just because I've been really busy. I haven't been able to get to her to plan what we're doing, but we are on the road and we're really excited. And John, I agree with you. The one thing, like when I had the vision of it, I just, like I said, I trust every, like just my life that way. Um, I was saying to Cheryl, I love that it's like this because I always had a sense that I'd be doing more and traveling more, but I never knew that it would be this. And I'm so happy that it is with Cheryl and what we're doing because I enjoy it. And it's not sad because yeah. it's, it's, hard, it's hard sometimes when people, right? It's, it's, I like that it's uplifting and it's fun and we have fun yeah. and it's bringing joy as well. Like even if I'm talking to someone who lost somebody, we're still, you know, Grief doesn't, I know it's hard. I've been through it myself, but it doesn't always have to be horrible. You know, like I like that it brings that joy and we can have fun with it. My favorite, it's funny because my favorites are a couple of times now, Jen will be like, "Uh, this is your grandmother, your grandma, right? Boy, she, 
she really likes to drink sherry. She's trying to give me <laughs> sherry, and I'm like, no, 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 I, I don't want that sherry. But no, she's trying to, like, to a couple of times, they like, they try to, like, that's their, like, oh, yeah, I used to drink a lot. And then people are like, oh, my God, yeah, that's so my grandmother. She so drank so much. Like, <laughs> it's, so, it's so funny. And what I love is that Jen, as, a, a, as an individual, is just accessible. Yeah. Right. Like just as a, she's just accessible. And when you meet her, it's just like, she's, it's, yeah, it's like, you know, and she, and it's her energy invites people in, right. As opposed to turning, turning people off. Like, uh, but she just invites people in and people like, like, I remember someone said to me after the first show, she's so normal. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. well, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, of course she's normal. Yeah, we got to yeah. work on that. We need to come up with like this really like eccentric <laughs> costume and. Oh, I, totally would do it. I would do it. <laughs> yeah. costume, I'm all over it. Right. Yeah. I love We're it. trying to yeah, plan something for October so we can get all gussied up and dressed up, but <clears throat> we'll see. Yeah. Very good. Well, I I, I predict. Uh, <laughs> uh, a huge success mm -hmm. for both of you because this is a. Um, uh, again, it's kind of like that that recipe that nobody knew um, would work, and it sounds a little odd in the beginning. But then you you have that first bite, and you're like, "This is incredible!" And you two are you're the perfect pair. Um, I know we've talked a lot about Jen's abilities, but Cheryl, I really think that you are the perfect person. Mm -hmm. Talk about accessible. I feel like you yeah. make. Jen more accessible by allowing the laugh. And there's something like, it's almost a relief after hearing. Um, and, and I want to be clear, like the things that we, that Jen brought up in our, uh, the show that I saw wasn't anything terribly dark or anything no. like that. It wasn't all doom and gloom or no. anything like that. Sometimes it was just silly little things that, uh, you know, let, people know that there was somebody there and that sort of thing. And it was just a little tip of the hat. Um, but I think that you guys have, uh, talking about energy, we've talked a lot about energy in, in today's mm -hmm. podcast, but you guys complement one another in a way that is, is truly special. Um, I mean, I've seen so many comedy teams I've seen so many people who, um, you know, work together and, and some people pair very well and others don't. And, uh, what you guys have is really unique and it's something that people walk away from and go, I want that. <laughs> <laughs> the, the connection you two have and the friendship you two have is just, um, nothing short of remarkable. Um, and I want to encourage everyone to check out your dates, check out, do you have a website you can share with us? <laughs> but I've already, Cheryl's laughing because I already brought this up that we got to do, I saw the website, so we're doing that, but we're on Instagram, everything's Fantastic. on comedy and spirit, and then we're going to put everything on there and we got to, we're working on the website. Fantastic. It's so funny. Every now and then Jen's like, like a few weeks ago, she's like, I just made us a TikTok account and I'm like, Okay. And then like, hey, we, okay, we need a website. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we have to take and these I'm, in stride sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I, and I say that, and I say that knowing how much fun we're going to have putting it all together as well. And, and to your, thank you so much for, um, a, your support, your compliments. Thank yes, you so much. Yeah. And I feel very blessed to have Jen suggest this in the first place. Like I feel blessed to, if, listen, if we were, my best friend and one of her daughters has come to every show. Uh, and I'm like, really, if I, if we only played for the two of them for the rest of our tour, <laughs> I'm fine. Like I just, cause I just, it's just a joy. Like I just, I just feel joyous during, before, during after there's just such a joy that and i get to work with jen and yeah I get, it's like I, I found a soul sister and it's awesome and don't get me wrong we sleep hard the night after a show like, oh i can imagine i can imagine yeah, just yeah, yeah. out of you uh 
the other thing that um, I wanted to say is, you know, uh, Cheryl, I had only really seen you do scene work. And I knew you were funny because some of the scenes were comedic and things of that nature, but I had never seen you do stand up comedy. And yeah. it's a very different style of stand up comedy because you're not delivering a regular set, right? Mm -hmm. Like it wouldn't, I don't think it would work if you went in and you like had pre planned, like, okay, she's going to do 15 minutes. I'm going to do 15 minutes and this is what it is. And it's structured. I don't think it would be as, um, intuitive as we are <laughs> as our word du jour today right um, yeah but, uh, but know that there's something really amazing about seeing you do things on the fly both of you and how i mean it, it really is you know when we talk about improv and accepting gifts and then saying yes and in really developing that and taking it further i feel like that's exactly what you guys have managed to do so seamlessly in your shows is you work so well off of each other, but you also take the gift from one and kind of re-present it in a different form. And you both do that. And it's just, it's so synergistically, um, uh, it, it's a freak of nature. It's, <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, uh, listen, bef and before every show, I wanna barf. <laughs> like we're doing a show and for like, because uh, I know that you're going to this, I don't know when this podcast is being released, but we're doing a show four days from the recording of this podcast. And I'm already kind of like, ooh, ooh, ooh. and I, and so there's always this moment where I kind of want to barf and Jen's like, it's okay. You can do this and you know, you can, and you're funny. And you're then it's just funny. like, oh. yeah. So he's funny. Just normal, funny. <laughs> <laughs> Let alone intuitive funny. I mean, come no. on. Come right? on. Yeah. <laughs> no. So, yeah. Well, I, feel I feel really grateful that I get to go on this ride with Jen. I really do. Like, I feel very grateful, too. It's fun. What is, I know. It's so much fun. Well, I, I, I truly predict great things for you both. I think the tour is the very, very um, quintessential next step. Mm -hmm. uh, for you too, because I think once other cities get a taste of this um, and see what uh, the possibilities and capabilities are, you are you are really going to take things by storm. So mm -hmm. I feel very fortunate to um, be here to kind of see this on the cusp of of uh, really taking off and becoming something that everyone is talking about. Uh, and so I feel very privileged. I feel very, very lucky that I had the chance to kind of see this in a smaller setting because I have a feeling you guys are going to start to play much bigger rooms mm -hmm. uh, and that sort of thing. <laughs> Calm down, Cheryl. I can I see know, you. I know, I'm fine. <laughs> I can see you going. She said. <laughs> no, it's funny because I called up Jen one day and I said, oh, my God, it's so funny. I just had this vision of me standing on this stage like – it was like kind of like a Massey Hall kind of a stage. And I was saying to them like, where's Jen? Anybody got eyes on Jen? And she like popped out from a, like a doorway on, on a balcony. And Jen's like, yeah, so you saw it too. And I'm like, I've been seeing it for years. <laughs> John, we have to take this slow. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Oh. so funny. Yeah, I'm, I'm very blessed that you came into my life too. I'm, I'm, I'm very feel very blessed that I met you and that you were there, and it's just been a light getting to know you through like just the light you share in the world. I want to thank you for that. I know this isn't about you, but I want to thank you because you're making a difference in a different way. Um, and I just Gosh, feel very blessed yes. too. And I, I, I love that you're on our journey with us. I feel very yeah. blessed. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I just uh, thank you so much. Any last words? Anything that you want to share? Any last words? That sounds terrible. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anything that you uh, that we haven't touched on that you want to share before we we sign off? Go skin and free. Say? What would you say? Go skin and free. Go yes, that's it. Get it totally free. Free. <laughs> I'm channeling. I'm like, what? Free admission. Wait, were you? Admission, oh, did I interrupt your channeling? Free admission no, for the great. dead. Free admission. Yeah, I love that. Hey, that's gotta be. 
look, uh, I, I feel like you're you're missing out on a potential um, financial gain. I, I think they should only get half off. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, come on, man. 50 percent off too you're not, my family not alone fills this space, right? <laughs> yeah 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 right so. they're not paying yeah, for yeah, rent yeah. they're not paying for all you know come on it's come not on. like their food bills that tell big. your loved come ones on. to bring you know because i taste the food they serve so you know i like sweet stuff <laughs> <It's> <laughs> taste and stuff it's sweet i don't drink a lot you can give me some but I don't like to be like I'll feel drunk, so don't give me a lot of alcohol. Um, tell your loved ones it's fun, and we'll have fun. Well, that's the other thing too is like at our loved last show. Spirit. Yeah, loved ones. So at our last show, there was someone who showed up. They were just walking down the street. They saw the sign yeah. and they hit the show, and she was guided there. So that's the other thing that I'm like. Uh, that's I'm intuition. Like, that's, <laughs> that's intuition. That like, so you're so like your dead loved ones are like, go to the show, go to the show. I have something to say. Go to the show. So it's kind of like if you're meant to be there, you'll be there, right? Which is a really new experience for me, because yeah. Jenna's always like, whoever is supposed to be here will be here, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> well, okay, yeah. Absolutely incredible. Yeah. I I, yeah. I wish you guys the very best. I know I don't even have to because you're already on uh, just the beginning, the first leg of your journey. Uh, but congratulations, Comedy and Spirits. Make Thank sure you, you check it out. It's on Instagram. It's on the Act With Purpose Instagram under our followers as well. So make sure you check it out. Uh, we will be posting lots of links to their shows as well. So make sure you keep an eye out in our Act With Purpose stories and other posts. But thank you both for being here and um, going through. Thank you, John. Yeah, thank you. Um, thank you for having us. Extraordinary links to uh, be here today. And you are very, very special guests. We're so honored to have you here. And um, that's it for today. So thank you, everyone, for joining us for another podcast. Thank you. Act thank with you. Purpose. Uh, and we hope that you go out there and find your purpose. Yes. Uh, and yes. Uh, pursue it with fervor and delight the way these two are. All with right. Your heart. Trust your heart. Trust your heart. I love that. All right. And trust John. Yes. <laughs> oh, you guys are the best. All right. Great Thanks, to see John. you. Good to Thank see you. you. Thanks so much for having us. Can't wait to meet you all. Yes. <laughs>